Coming to you from uh, good old beautiful Montana. The weather's good. It's a little chilly. Um, I'm sitting here watching the train go by. I'm not sure if you can see this, but uh, right out there on the horizon is the the main train track that runs pretty much from Kansas City all the way. Uh, this way would be to Seattle. Um, pretty neat stuff. Sometimes you can actually see them uh, delivering the fuselages of 737s, which, you know, we haven't been here long since December. And the first time I saw that come by with these 737s, it was pretty wild. Uh, I talked to one guy, he said that, uh, usually when they arrive in, uh, <clears throat> um, Washington state, I think that's where it is that they go to, but, uh, they said they're they're just completely filled with uh, bullet holes with kids shooting in them. Um, probably won't see too many new planes being built these days. They're being flown to the desert and stored, which nobody's flying. Uh, here's a little update, folks. Just let's think about this. A few months ago, if I would have told you, you'd be sitting at home, most of you, some of you jobless, um, drawing unemployment, the entire country would be shut down, almost the entire world, and you just about wouldn't be able to leave your home, you probably would have laughed at me. Um, I knew by the things that I've been studying that it was going to get bad, um, but I didn't think it was going to go this way. And I, I, with the intel that I have, I've always communicated with certain people, and, and they've talked about this, that it could get and in essence, we're in sort of martial law. It's just a different, it's just a, a different spoke to the wheel of it, but it's essentially martial law. Um, here's the, here's the facts, folks. Um, it just came out with the unemployment. We're now over 10 million unemployed. Uh, we went from the best economy to the worst economy like that. Uh, it goes to really show the control of the government. Okay, I'm going to stick to the facts. I know the last video was pretty harsh. Um, I just, uh, you know, I got back and, and my neighbor wouldn't even, um, they didn't even want to, we went on a nice hike. We offered to, um, see if they wanted to join us. And they said, no, you just got back from New York. So we don't want to be around you. Well, you know, here's my theory. Uh, I think this whole COVID thing was deployed. It's funny how it's, you know, New York is the worst place, right? 9-11, where'd it happen? Mostly New York, all right? Yeah, some Pennsylvania and such, but New York is always the spotlight. Um, anyways, getting back to the facts, uh, we have unemployment over 10 million now. Truth be known, it's probably a little bit higher than that. Uh, the Navy has been deployed, okay? This is a big one. They have shut down the shipping lanes around the United States um, with the U.S. Navy. Now, we they say they're trying to fight um, certain, you know, terrorism and such. That's BS. Okay, what they're telling you on the news is not what's really happening, people. I promise you that is a fact. We don't know exactly what they're up to, but they have now surrounded all the shipping lanes and cut off some, you know, um, monitoring all shipping lanes around the United States of America here. Okay, that's that's a given. Uh, we're at 50,000 um, deaths right now with the COVID. This is why I don't believe that, you know, this is all over just the coronavirus. Um, all this time in worldwide, we're just now approaching 50,000 deaths, okay? I I'm not downplaying those 50,000 deaths. That's a horrible thing. I could die tomorrow from it. It is not worth shutting the country down for um, a virus that, if we compared it to the flu last year, the flu took 60,000 people. Okay? Um, it's not worth completely shutting our government and our economy down. The government's really not shutting down, but the economy. Um, so 10 million unemployed, stock markets crashing, 
I think it's up a little bit, but this is going to continue to go down. They're saying now all the top, you know, um, financial people out there are now saying we're headed for the great greatest depression ever. And I think I told you that on the last one. That was the title of my video was we are now headed for the greatest depression ever. Um, we've only begun. Se uh, first quarter re reports are coming out. Uh, second quarter is going to be even worse. This thing's not going to probably hit the bottom for a while. Um, Navy deployed 50,000 deaths with COVID on something that was deployed. Um, the Federal Reserve has pumped into, if you don't know what the repo market is, I'm not going to go deep into it in this video, but research it and understand it because Basically, as of, I think, about September of last year, um, I started noticing that they were pumping overnight without really telling anybody. They were pumping in uh, billions and billions of dollars into the banks, which told me that there's a major problem. Um, the banks, you've heard Donald Trump sit there and, and shout, oh, the banks are healthy. The banks, I've, I've heard people saying, hey, the banks are healthier than they've ever been. Um, that's not the case. If you're healthy, if my businesses are doing really well and I have no debt, but if I have all this debt and I need to keep borrowing, keep borrowing, I go to this other bank and say, hey, I need more money. But th then they look at my balance sheet and they go at my P&L and they're looking at it saying, I, we don't think you're too healthy to do it. If I had the option, this is what the banks are doing. They're basically going to the Federal Reserve and saying, hey, I'm struggling over here and I have to make these numbers work out. Would you give me some money? That's what's happening, folks. It's been happening. So they have the feds have pumped into the repo market over seven trillion dollars. OK, um, the National Guard has been deployed to most major cities. I'm here in Montana in the middle of nowhere. I'm up here in Helena. Uh, which is state capital, and the uh, National Guard has even been deployed here. And there's, it's not a big capital. It's probably one of the smallest state capitals ever. Um, I'm checking out here because there's a flatbed. That, this is the main road, too. I was talking about the train track out here, but um, this is also a main cut through coming up from the Bozeman area if you were to cut up and head towards Missoula. So it's a pretty good, well-traveled area. It's great. I, when I'm not on the road, I love sitting here, uh, taking in the, the views, of course, but also the trucks and uh, seeing the freight that comes along on the trains. But anyways, um, the National Guard's been deployed, okay? How is this affecting trucking, okay? I want to stick to trucking, but I'm also just trying to bring up speed on the facts here, people. Um, and... Throw any questions you got. Maybe I'll do a live episode, whatever, and we can really talk through this. I'm not saying I have all the answers, but I, I spend a lot of time researching. I don't know where this is going. How this seems to uh, affect trucking is, I personally believe that most trucking will be shut down in the next couple weeks. Um, when I was just out there last week, Coming back um, from New York, I picked up steel over there in New York. Uh, the factories were shut down. Most of your states are, are shutting down uh, with only essential stuff. Um, by the way, I thought all businesses were essential. I think we're realizing that now. Look at the unemployment. Anyway, um, my feeling is flatbed's just about shut down. Uh, there's there's really almost next to no no loads coming in or out of Montana right now. There's a few things coming in, but there's hardly anything. I think I checked the load board this morning. There was only nine loads coming out of the entire state of Montana. It's usually a lot better than that. Some of you could say, hey, well, it's Montana, but that's not usually the case. Um, I usually have at least 20 to pick from just in this one little area. So, And that's not great, but, you know. It, it is what it is. Um, so ton, 10 million unemployed. The Navy is now deployed, shutting down most shipping lanes around the country. Um, we're headed into the greatest depression ever. Uh, 50,000 deaths, not even close to the flu. 
uh, 60,000 last year. Um, we have pumped into the system over $7 trillion into the repo market. Nobody's talking about that on, on the news. Uh, the National Guard has been deployed. Um, and trucking is starting to really slow down. It's becoming tougher. The lanes that we all used to run are becoming tougher. I think reefers doing very well. There's certain hot spots that are that are doing really good. And by that, I, I'm talking about what what division of trucking you're in. So, um, questions that really kind of come up and come to mind are, where are we headed? Um, at the end of the day, we've all got to do something. Are we headed to, to be in a communist country? I don't know. I hope not. Um, we already seem like we're halfway there. Um, we've all got to do something. You know, when we wake up every day, we've got to do something and it's not going to just remain sitting at home. OK, good or bad. I don't know. But they basically they're shielding off the country. Is it truly something that maybe Trump's trying to do to just bring the United States back to its core foundation the way it used to be? I hope so. Nobody really knows. Why is he spending so much money? Why is he is he writing checks that we cannot cash right now? Why is the Federal Reserve really writing checks that we cannot cash? Here's the thing. We could sit here. I'm not trying to scare people. We could paint doom and gloom. The United States has the ability to write a trillion dollar coin and make this go away like that. Because you know what? We're not backed by gold anymore. So it doesn't matter. Who's to say that all that debt just doesn't doesn't get wiped away. I don't know. Crazier things have happened, right? We're in a situation where there again, here we are. If I would have said we would all be locked in our houses and not allowed to go anywhere without putting a mask over our face, a muzzle, um, three months ago, you would have laughed. You would have said I was crazy. So where are we going? I think within the next couple weeks, we're going to see or start to see a true outline of what's going to be happening or what is happening. Listen, they know people. They've got plans. They've got an A, B, C, D plan. They know what's going to happen. They've, they've figured out where our military needs to be. Um, they're, they're, they're up to something here, and I just... We all want to understand what it is so we can get back to life as as we knew it. Um, our bills don't stop. You know, I'm not interested in, in a check from the uh, from the federal government. OK, none of us should be interested in a check from the federal government. I know some people would probably say, hey, screw it. Who cares? It's a loan. You're selling yourself to the devil. If we sit back and we just let government get even bigger and bigger and bigger, and the American people just take this $2 trillion and we just get further in debt, where are we really headed, folks? What are we doing? I don't know. I'm not saying I have the answers. All I can do is look at history. And history clearly says, and I mean the right type of history, you got to do your, your homework. We've always come out of certain situations, especially the United States, okay, in a good, positive manner. The Great Depression, what did we do? We went to war. World War I, what happened? There was, it wasn't the Great Depression, but there was a recession before World War I. A war brought us out of it. We got pulled into World War One. We got pulled into World War II. Okay. <clears throat> Could we be headed to war? I don't know. President talked about Iran again all day yesterday. Um, started blaming things on Iran. Iran has done nothing to us. Okay. You take a country like Israel. I'm sorry. They sit there. They took that country over. Okay. 
You guys got to do your research. 1946, I believe it was, what was created, the United Nations, right after World War II. Guess where all the Jews that were in the Nazi prison camps went to? They were shipped down to Israel. They took over what they call the Holy Land. Okay? Why does this matter? Because 50% of fixing a problem is understanding a problem. Okay? I'm not saying I'm racist or anything. I'm just giving you the facts. The facts in history, okay? Israel was taken over at that time, okay? Israel's right next to Iran. Iran and Israel don't get along. Who are, who's our ally? Israel. Um, look at what happened in Syria, okay? Um, are we going to go to war with Iran? We've been talking about it for quite some time. Does this have anything to do with it? I don't know. I'm just saying that if you look at history, whenever there's been a situation like this, we've been brought out of it by war. Now, the problem is, if you really are a numbers person, rates have been going down and down and down. They're at zero, basically. Don't forget that, people. We're down to zero. Is there any more bullets left in the chamber? Yeah, you go to negative rates. Some of your European countries are going to that. They've already been there. So in other words, again, if I give you a thousand bucks, you only have to pay me 900 back. Let's just use that scenario. Um, we could go to that. Again, it doesn't make any financial sense at all. But I think that's where we're, we're headed. Um, Usually we're brought out of this by a war. So keep our radar up for the next two weeks. What's getting ready to happen here, folks, is going to be big. I really think times are going to get extremely tough. Um, we have to be strong. You know, take your frustrations out. Um, in a good way, go, go work out, get mentally strong, get healthy, um, do what you have to do to maintain those two things financially, take care of food. Number one, shelter as much as you can. Don't worry about credit cards, things like that. When times get really, really tough, take care of the basics, okay? But somewhere out of all of this, I believe there's going to be something good, but it's going to get extremely tough. So all I'm trying to do is open the lines of communication. Um, I don't know what it really means for trucking over the next few weeks, over the over really the next couple months. Um, I think it's just going to get extremely tough in every avenue. Um, could they completely shut trucking down? Yes, they could. How do we get things? The military brings them to us. They could be knocking on your door saying, here's how much food you and your family get for the week. Again, all what I'm sitting here saying sounds crazy, but then so does the situation we're in if I would have told you three months ago. So remember that. I wish everybody well. We'll keep the videos going. And throw the questions. Counter in, tell me. Um, throw your questions together here. And um, let's talk about them. Because these big topics right here are the facts. Okay? Over 10 million now unemployed. We're headed for much higher numbers. The Navy, U.S. Navy, has been deployed, shutting down our shipping lanes. We're now headed for the greatest depression ever in the United States. 50,000 deaths with the COVID. Over $7 trillion pumped into the repo markets to prop the banks up. National Guard being deployed in most major cities. Trucking starting to slow down. What's happening? 
gotta think. We gotta dig. There's a seed in there somewhere. There's a story being laid out. Folks, this is history like we've never seen it before. Damn it, we gotta live it too, unfortunately. But this, this, this is a, this, we're getting ready to embark in the times that my grandparents talked about. It, it's going to change us. It's going to make us think about what we buy, how we buy it, how we get our food, how much food we have left over, what, are, what we do with it, how our animals survive. We have to stop and understand where we are at. It's not to scare everybody, folks, but we have to understand what's going on to understand where we're going. So I just urge everybody to really stop, think about it, get prepared. What do we need to do to get prepared for this? What can we do? You can say, oh, I've got the guns, I've got the ammo, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think there's going to be some big riots in cities. Once people don't have the ability to get the food, um, to go shop and to do the normal things we've all been used to. I mean, come on, let's face it. Kids today get annoyed if they if they can't jump on the internet or something or or on Facebook or whatever or Twitter or whatever they're doing nowadays. I don't I don't keep up with it all. But what I do know is we're all getting ready to have to come together as United States and get back to the basics. All these wonderful things, I don't know that those will be on the other side quite the way we've always known them. So with that, we'll stay strong, stay healthy, and sorry, battery's about to die.